Tonight I sit down with Patrick Ray, director of the film Nailbiter, and talk about it as well as other numerous movies and short films he has made. The reels are rolling here on Upstart Film. Good evening and welcome to Upstart Film, where we talk to independent filmmakers about their hardships and successes when creating movie magic. From the KMOS Studios in Warrensburg, Missouri, I'm your host, Josh Leonard. Thanks for tuning in. Tonight, I have the director of Nailbiter, Patrick Ray, in studio. Hey, Patrick, how's it going? Hey, Thanks for joining us, Thanks man. for having me. All right, so um, go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourself as a filmmaker. How did you get involved in all this? Well, I, I, you know, I have to go back to 1985. I was five years old. I, I used to, like... Act out movies in my backyard. I grew up in Nebraska, a small town. The only thing really I could do is go to the movies. So that's kind of what got me inspired. Um, and then I started making little videos when I was in junior high. And then high school, my high school had it, its own channel that broadcast to everybody who had cable. So I started making little movies. Uh, I would stay after school. And of course, the janitor would have to kick me out. Um, and then um, I went to college. I went to the community college in Nebraska. And then eventually transferred to the University of Kansas, where I went to film school. And just started making films all the time for for class, and and uh, and then graduated in 2002, and basically just dedicated myself to making making movies and and uh, not getting a full time job. So <laughs> basically, I, I lived in Lawrence for about 10 years. Um, I worked for a TV studio part time. Um, in 2006, they started getting wind that uh, we were making films and wanted to help, so they gave me basically an annual budget to make some short films. And so from 2006 to 2010, I was working there and doing uh, some short film work there and then started working on uh, my feature film, Nailbiter, and then um, moved to Kansas City. So I've been in Kansas City since then and working full time in, in the industry and uh, uh, I just keep chugging along. And just when I think uh, things go, are going in a bad direction, they go, they, things swing back the, the other way. So it's been, it's been fun. All right, so you mentioned Nailbiter. So what what is Nailbiter? Uh, Nailbiter is a horror film that um, I started actually working on it with Kendall Sin back in like 2007. And uh, Kendall Sin and I kind of came up with the story and co-wrote the script. Um, and then we started looking for financing in 2008. Basically, it's a horror film that's it's very Kansas-y based. Um, it's, it deals with tornado, a tornado weather. Um, it's a family basically on their way to the airport, and they get caught up in a, in a tornado warning and uh, end up having to take shelter in this, this cute house. Um, and uh, then things, then it becomes a monster movie at that point. Um, so basically I wanted to take the, the fear of, you know, tornadic weather in, in Kansas and then kind of swing it around into a monster movie at that point. And um, so the film actually got released through um, Lionsgate in, in 2013. It was in the red box. And now it's been circulating on television on Chiller Chiller TV, uh, kind of building up a fan base. And uh, so, yeah, no, it's been a great experience. I've taken the film to a lot of film festivals. Uh, it's played at the uh, Palm Beach International Film Festival. Of course, it played at the Kansas City Film Fest, Omaha Film Festival, where it had its premiere. Um, and then it's played in, at the New York City Horror Film Festival. So it, it ended up playing at about 45 to 50 film festivals. And uh, it's actually going to be playing at a drive-in on September 25th in Austin. So I'm going to go down for that. And so the movie's, you know, it's it's still making the rounds. And, and um, it's been airing about once once or twice a month on Chiller. So it's been very fun. So um, where did you come up with the concept for it? You know, I, I was actually, I was coming home from the New York City Horror Film Festival um, in 2006. And I remember I was on the airplane and I just kind of was halfway asleep. And I kind of thought, well, it'd be kind of interesting to combine uh, tornado, a tornado into a horror movie, and um, kind of give it that Kansasy feel, but yet still make it, um, you know, something su supernatural. And so, um, and the way the film goes, the creatures in the movie are, are basically, it's like a werewolf, except instead of when the full moon comes out, it's basically when a, a tornadic weather happens or stormy weather, these people start to kind of change. That's cool. So not to give anything too much away, but. Um, um, so yeah, no, I think it came up with it that 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 night on the plane, and then I, I called up Kendall, and we were basically uh, kind of ping pongy ideas and started working on the script, and and um, you know it's just kind of funny to think 2006 is when it when it was um, kind of came to fruition in my mind, and it's you know just now kind of airing on television. So it takes a long time to to make an independent film. So 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so like, what kind of preparation uh, did you go into the, your pre-production? Well, I, I ended up storyboarding the entire movie, um, which I hand draw all the shots. Um, that my, in itself takes a long time. It, it's very <laughs> tedious. Yeah. Um, and I do that with all my short films. Um, I just did that with my recent feature film, Enclosure, which is still in post-production. I just I hand draw all the shots. And um, it's a very lonely process. But I think, it's, I think it's necessary because it definitely shows the crew where we're at in terms of the shots. And I, you know, I decide which shot's going to be a dolly shot or what shot's going to be a jib shot. Um, you know, and so, but it all changes when you get on set. A lot of that stuff does. But um, it definitely helps um, cue the crew and where you're at. But uh, in, for Nailbiter, I had, like, we shot in, a, in this building that basically had a huge cellar. And I had a whole wall covered in storyboards. And, um, you know, I basically could show everybody where we were at. But, of course, because of budget, we had to change some scenes. And um, we ended up having to take a year hiatus from production. We shot oh, wow. two-thirds of the movie and then had to come back a year later to finish it. And in that year, I basically had to reconstruct a lot of the scenes that we were going to have to shoot because we just weren't going to have the, the, the budget to uh, make the scenes the way I wanted to. So I ended up having to kind of downsize it and... Um, redo the storyboards so you know you're always in a constant state of flux when you're making a, a feature film and you have to kind of roll with the punches um so yeah i mean in terms of of storyboarding and um creating shot lists and of course casting took a few months um those were pretty much the big hurdles in the pre-production but i think that i always tell filmmakers especially young filmmakers that they need to they need to at least storyboard or come up with shot lists for the crew don't just show up on set with nothing because then people are going to be lost so Speaking of casting, um, so how did you how did you go about casting your roles? Um, we went through um, a couple talent agencies in Kansas City. Uh, I believe it was Exposure and Talent Unlimited, and uh, we brought a lot of actors in to read. Um, the lead girl, uh, Meg Sarix, was like the last person to audition, and at that point, I was getting a little scared that I wasn't going to find um, the the lead girl, and she was like the last person to come in and audition. And I was like, oh, thank you. So <laughs> she was she was fantastic. Um, we cast Aaron McGrain fairly early in the process. Um, and uh, the first person we ended up casting was Joycey Appel, who plays uh, the elderly, the villain of the film, which I, not to give too much away, but um, she was cast about a year in advance. I just saw her and I said, hey, you know, I have a part for you in this movie, and I had her read it for me, and, and um, I was like, you're, you're, you're cast, whenever I get financing, <laughs> we'll make the movie. So um, it took some time, but uh, yeah, she was definitely the first person. Sweet. Um, so, what was what was you said? You mentioned a little bit of budget. Um, I'm assuming uh, you know independent film. So, like, what was your budget? How did you go about getting funding, or did you do it yourself, or how did you? You get know, it? we had outside investors. Um, you know, we kept the budget under uh, under four hundred thousand, uh, and we just had to piece it together over time. Um, you know, it was one of those things where, uh, you know, we would raise a little bit here, a little bit there. And shoot when we could. You know, it, we shot the majority of the film in 2009 or 2000, and then the other part of it in 2010. Um, and then we shot the finale at the airport, um, the KC, KCI airport, mm -hmm. uh, in 2011. So, so by that point, you know, and then you spend about a year doing sound and doing the, the, the editing and the color correction, the special effects. So it wasn't really on the festival circuit till 2012. And um, and then finally came out on DVD in 2013. So it just it takes a long time, and you have to have a lot of stamina because uh, and excitement for the project because you will get you can get burned out really easily when you're working on a movie that's that's extended the period is, is extended so long. So um, so I did a lot of short film work in my breaks so that I could like find something else to basically work on and and kind of cleanse my palate for a little bit and then come back to to nail biter. Right. So, so where was it all filmed at? Um, the majority of it was filmed in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, we shot inside a building that was used for the 1960s classic black and white movie Carnival of Souls. Um, they used to build organs in this building, and we ended up using um, the basement. Shot the majority of it there. Then we ended up using um, a house out out uh, west of Lawrence, and then we shot some scenes in Leewood, which was interesting because basically I had to go around all the houses in this neighborhood because we were shooting in an actual neighborhood in Leewood and getting and getting that that location was was a challenge because obviously we were going to be shooting from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. which is an odd time to film so um, I just went around all the neighbors and asked them to sign a little 
hey, it's okay to film here thing. And then basically we shot three nights in Leewood and, you know, only got asked by the police once what we were doing. Um, but generally speaking, the neighbors would just sit outside and watch, and every now and then I would ask them to be, you know, in the background for extras and stuff like that. So, so everybody, you know, between Lawrence and Leewood, everybody was fantastic, and and um, couldn't have done it without them. So, that's always I think the fun part about it, where you just you'll have people kind of watching and everything like that, and you're just like, uh, hey, um, actually, yeah, this could help if you give <laughs> we have a little bit more people in here. Yeah, right, right, and everybody gets really excited about it. That's the good thing about shooting movies in in the KC area is that. There's still a lot of excitement, you know. You go up, to go to a place, and say, "Hey, I'd love to use your location as, as a place for my film," and they'd be like, "Oh, yes, fantastic." Not um, to mention, uh, there, I read some article about how it's supposed to be like kind of turning into like the the new New Orleans of like filming and stuff like so. that. I hope so. I mean, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. I, I love uh, living here, and and. Um, um, shot my last feature film in Charleston, South Carolina, but it was is one of those things where, um, you know, I, I like living in Kansas City, making my films here, and and um, it's gotten to the point now where the equipment is readily available to everybody. So it's like you can make movies anywhere as long as you just got the support system and uh, talented people to work with. So right. Um, so uh, how did you get it picked up by Lionsgate? Um, we ended up signing with a sales agent um, that uh, was. Uh, my, my producer, Aaron Law, had made a film called Last Breath, and he had gotten a sales agent through through that film, and so we ended up using the same sales agent. And they were the ones who hooked us up with Lionsgate, and so, um, yeah, it was it was, uh, it was was awesome. I was very excited, and they did a good job of getting the movie out there, and it seemed like a lot of people got to see it. And I mean, now, it wasn't until now that it's been airing on television and circulation that it seemed to get a lot of a lot of people reaching out to me about it. it has, it's funny because I haven't seen it on TV because I spent, you know, a good year making the movie flow as a you know ninety minute movie, and now it's cut up into commercial breaks, and so it's like I can't I can't watch it. <laughs> so it's like right when they're getting to a suspenseful scene, they cut to a you know right. an ad. So, but uh, but it's been it's been cool. So, all right, well uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer for Patrick Ray's Nailbiter, and then when we come back. Why are we staying in Kansas City tonight? Because I want us to be the first people your dad sees, not some hotel desk clerk. Then the National Weather Service issued a tornado watch. Please, I lived in Kansas my whole life. I've never once seen a tornado. Be abandoned for shelter. Otherwise, go to an interior room on the lowest level of your home. Anybody have a tornado? Why don't you have a tornado? Why don't you have a tornado? Running from danger. I think the storm's over. I think we're safe. I don't know. What was that? Do you hear that? Until. You have to get out of here. They came. Face to face. There's no need to run, sweetie. Look for it on DVD. All right, so uh, that was the trailer, which uh, looks awesome. I'm a huge horror fan, so um, I really need to make sure I catch that. I don't have Chiller TV, but I definitely, uh, definitely will rent it. I, 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 you could actually rent it off of YouTube, off of Lionsgate's YouTube site too. I just found out, so I think that'd be pretty cool. I'm definitely gonna try and check that out. Awesome. Um, so um, since I, I said I know you can get it off of YouTube and stuff like that, where else can people watch the movie? Um, you know, it, it's on Amazon Instant. Um, you can rent it off of that. I think it's on. Uh, oh man, it's on so many. It's on uh, a bunch of different. Uh, it's on iTunes. Um, but so you know, you just it's, you can get it for Xbox or whatever. I was like amazed when it came out. I was just like going through all of that. I'm like, hey, I can get it on my X Xbox. Cool. So so yeah, no, it's been very very cool to see it kind of make the rounds. So. All right. Um, so you kind of told me that you've been developing a sequel. You yes. wanna you wanna give me a little tease on I, that? You know, um, I, I wanted to take a break from Nailbiter just for a little bit. And I ended up uh, making another feature film called Enclosure, um, and then now that I'm wrapping up on that film, I've started 
working on the sequel to Nailbiter, which um, a lot of people have asked me about because this one kind of ends on a cliffhanger. So a lot of people are going to be like, hey, when are you going to make the second one? So yeah, the script is written. I've kind of been asking around on some of the locations and just because we're using some of the same locations we used for the first movie. And um, you know, hopefully we can get that going. I'd like to start shooting that next summer. Um, so now it's just a process of doing some local casting and uh, raising the funds, which is never easy. But uh, hopefully, since the first film has made the rounds, it might be a little easier than the first first movie raising the funds for it. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I'm hoping next summer and using the same crew and shooting it in the uh, Kansas City Lawrence area and. and uh, Hopefully we can get it out and finished uh, a lot faster than this, the first one. So, um, so yeah, no, it, it's, it's the problem is that it's a much bigger script in terms of like just locations and and uh, effects. So, um, so it's going to be a little bit more complicated. But I think that you have to up the ante a little bit from the first one. And and um, the first one is almost like a tease. So I'm hoping that the the second one um, we could definitely uh, can you know pay off some of the stuff that we set up with the first movie. Awesome. All right. So you mentioned how um, in between the hiatus and stuff you've been making, you made other films and just kind of keep the flow going. Um, so I kind of want to talk a little bit uh, about some of those other projects that I've watched. Uh, uh, Good Conduct was one that I really liked. I recognized a couple of the people in there. Right, right. So uh, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, and I thought it was a really interesting, neat concept um, about that. I just... Uh, didn't know uh, like how you kind of came up with the whole concept. You want to? The script was actually written by Michelle Davidson. She ha she hosts K Casey Live here in Kansas City, and um, she uh, she wrote the script and sent it to me. And she's like, "This is something I really want to do." Um, and I just thought the script was excellent, and it was so like tight too. It was like a six-page script. Um, we could shoot it in one location. We ended up using, I think, a rec center. I can't remember. It was like a rec center that we made look like a jail. It was actually right next to a yoga class that was going on while we were filming, which was interesting, especially since there's a fight scene in, in the in the film. But um, no, we shot the movie in one day and um, got a really good performance. I ended up, you know, getting Chris Bilsma and Scott Cordes to be the leads, and the two of them um, basically we rehearsed and rehearsed for uh, uh, a couple weeks before we shot the film, and that way. All the kinks were kind of out with the dialogue and anything that needed to be restructured, we could do. But the film is, has been playing at a lot of film festivals. It played at the Newport Beach Film Festival and the Cleveland International Film Festival. And it actually, I think it won Best Kansas Short at the Tallgrass Film Festival. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not, it's not horror. It's, just, it's got some suspense to it, but it's more of a dramatic piece. I like to, with, with short films, I like to try different things. You know, I don't like to do strictly sci-fi or supernatural stuff I've been doing a lot of different different styles and I've done some comedic shorts um, and I feel like it's it short films allow you to, to experiment and you know try out new cameras work with new actors um, and I do think that a lot of stories shouldn't extend past a short film you know there's some stories that are just perfect and they're like 10 minute increment and um, I certainly thought this story was was one that was uh, was just perfect for six minutes so. absolutely uh, you can actually yeah, I mean uh, we actually have a clip that you can and you can see the tension. Um, so let's go ahead and take a little uh, mini look at uh, good conduct. Good. Wish I could say the same for you. <laughs> yeah. Your mother said you wanted to wait to see me outside of this place. It's been so long you couldn't wait one more day. No, I guess uh, I guess I just needed to see you. One more day. Can you believe it? Hard to believe. So yeah, you make definitely gotta make sure to uh, check that out. Um, you can see how the tension started building right there, but we didn't want to give anything away, really. Um, so another movie uh, that you've done I really wanted to talk to you about was uh, Return. I thought that was really 
a really cool concept, and I didn't see where it was going at first, and, I, and then uh, you started seeing this, this stuff. I'll let you talk about it a little well, bit. Well, Return, actually, uh, the writer, Lunita Cook, approached me with doing, she wanted to do kind of this experimental piece that uh, dealt with um, past lives and, and uh, dealing with abusive relationships in the past lives. And, and so the film is, is very, like, interpretive. Um, and I almost shot it like it, like an interpretive dance almost because the a the actress in the film um, Bailey Amethyst is what I think her name. She runs through this entire film, and um, we shot a lot of a lot of the film in the Livestock Exchange Building at, at uh, in the West Bottoms. And um, you know, there's a couple moments where she looks through a keyhole, and she can see a past life. And so we 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 create recreated these these little moments um, it, that are supposed to be like. So the same dilemma that she's been living through, but in past past lives. The film is ve it's very interesting because it gets a very interesting reaction from some people. Some people just love it, and some people are like, "Hmm, I'm not really sure what to think of that." But uh, it, it just recently played at the Omaha Film Festival and the Kansas City Film Fest, and it's uh, kind of lined up to play at a couple other film festivals right now. And, and uh, I'm really proud of it. I just think it looks looks fantastic, and it's definitely completely different from all the rest of the films I've made. And I think that's why I did it. When Lanita, Lanita approached me with the script, I was like. Like, yeah, I want to do this because this is something that actually is going to stretch uh, my filmmaking ability and, and kind of take, you know. And it was one of those films that we shot in two days, but we really should have shot three because, I mean, one day was like 17 hours of, of shooting. Um, but we tried to crunch it all in two days of shooting, and it was just a, it was a challenge because the poor girl had to run a lot in the film. And, and uh, but uh, no, it's definitely uh, definitely getting a good reaction. And Joseph Anderson, who's a, one of the other actors in the film, has been uh, making the rounds. He just was in, I think, Chicago PD um, recently. And oh so, wow! So yeah, so um, a lot of talented people to work with. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, I really liked that one. I thought that one was really cool. It goes through the different time generations right. or whatever. Um, I will tell you this next one. Uh, I it's. It was. It's actually my favorite one that I've seen of yours. The first one I got to see of yours was uh, Howl at the Moon. Um, I just thought that entire thing, I didn't see where it was going, or I didn't see how it was going to end. Mm. So I thought that was really neat. Um, so tell me a little bit about uh, that. How'd you, how'd you come up with that? Well, the, uh, I was approached by a film festival in Arkansas called the Hot Springs Horror Film Festival. Um, and I had attended the film festival and showed a couple films the year before. And they're like, we should make a movie together. And I'm like, OK. And um, they really were impressed with my DP, Hahnemann Brown Eagle, who shoots 95% of the films I make. And um, so they wanted to have Hahnemann and I come down and shoot a short film during the film festival, which was a challenge because obviously the film festival is going on, so we were only able to shoot the film from like 6 a.m. to noon before the film started playing. So basically we were getting up early, filming as much as we could. Second the film started playing in the film festival, we had to get out of the theater and start um, shooting stuff that was outside of the theater had nothing to do with the, with the actual theater, um, but I wanted to come up with a concept that was that was kind of fun and, and tongue in cheek and had a little bit of that amazing stories or tales from the crypt quality Absolutely. to it. Um, and um, they owned a theater, so I was like, all right, let's write a script around a movie theater. Um, I wanted it to, to somehow be somehow werewolf related, um, not to give too much away. And of course, this has it has a twist ending that uh, is kind of fun and. And uh, yeah, so this one has actually been playing at film festivals recently. Um, it's kind of a, my newest short film at this point. Um, it's been playing at, I uh, just played in Indianapolis. And uh, yeah, it's got, it's got a ton of film festivals, at least 10 or 15 more, more to go so far. Wow. Um, and so it's hard to keep track of them all, to be <laughs> honest with you. But, um, and I've entered it in a lot, so I haven't heard from, from several of those. But um, it should be in New York and LA soon. And uh, it's fun. It, it, it stars Leslie Easterbrook, who some people may know. She played Callahan in Police Academy, and uh, she was also in The Devil's Rejects. And then um, Tamara Glynn, who was in Halloween 5. And um, so it was like this fun time because a lot of these actors were at the film festival as guests and then also got to be in the movie. But they had to get up really early, of course. But uh, <laughs> And um, so, yeah, it was, it was a good time. And, and uh um, I think it'll actually be playing at that, at that Hot Springs Horror Film Festival next year, or this actually this October. Awesome. So. Uh, the last one I wanted to talk to you about uh, that uh, threw me through a couple of loops when watching it uh, was Counterparts. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about that. It's all, it was all one, one actress, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Okay, it, was, it, was an, it, yeah. you know, it deals with a, an actress. It, it, basically, the actress approached me and wanted to, to, to make a film, and so she and I kind of put our heads together, and I came up with this story. Um, where I, she wanted to, to show her acting chops, and I'm like, well, if that's the case, 
let's write a, a movie where you, you've got your, your, you know, either you have multiple personalities. In this case, she's twins, so um, she plays two different parts. And it's got that, again, it's got that Tales from the Crypt vibe. It has a little bit of uh, voodoo involved with the storyline. And, and um, we shot this film in 2013, and it's still been on the festival circuit. Um, it's also available on Vimeo. You can check it out now. And, and um, recently, Ain't It Cool News posted it. And so it's been getting a lot of, of views. And um, no, it was a lot of fun. It was just a challenge, because obviously, she's playing the same, she's, she's the same actress playing two different parts. So we had to have a stand in, come in for the over the shoulder shots to show that, you know, I used my wife for some of those shots. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. And, and uh, so that one's, that one's making the rounds. And I think that uh, hopefully in the next few months, I'll have an announcement about a, a DVD coming out with a lot of my short films. Um, that's going to package a lot of my short films. And, and so um, hopefully that one will be on there and, and, uh, a lot of people will be able to catch a lot of these short films that way, too. Awesome. Uh, is there any place, real quickly, is there any place to, because uh, we're running out of time, is there any place that we can, anyone can go and view uh, any of these on, Yeah, online? a lot of them are on Vimeo. Um, if you go to sinoreality.com, uh, it's S-E-N-O, reality.com. A lot of them are linked on there, but most of them are on Vimeo. If you go to my Patrick Ray on Vimeo, you can find a lot of them. Some of them are password protected still because they're on the, uh, the festival circuit. And... Um, uh, a lot of the times, when once the film starts to, um, you know, be released to the internet, it'll end up on Ain't a Cool News, and I'll post some stuff. But if you uh, look me up on on Facebook, you can check the films out that way too. Awesome. Well, Patrick, I appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks again uh, for joining me and we're having a great discussion about your movies and everything like that. But that's all the time we have for tonight's episode of Upstart Film. Uh, tune in next week as we have some more exciting news and uh, movies to talk about, and we'll see you next time.